Hey everyone, so we were we were just working on this new idea we had for having a banner up on the screen and Rizwan was working on it. And then Isaiah said, you know, let me let me help walk you through some of the stuff. So so one of the things, yeah, that I wanted to just um make sure you understand here. The 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 GUI itself has its own event that usually is independent of the controls events, right? So now these two, we're gonna go ahead and do this. Put all the events together that are related to the GUI. That makes it easy for us to know where those are, right? Now, when you what I was kind of like talking about is the width and height of this element. Let's say it's gonna be 120, whatever it is, right? Or let's keep it to the size of the text. But here you already have an event of when the GUI is resized. What I don't know, and this is the part that I wouldn't use this event, is if you move the window, and I don't know how you're not doing it. Oop, sorry. Let's have the caption here just for a second. You will see in a second why. And let's reload it. So when you move the window, I don't think it's the same event as when you resize the window. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the way how to figure it out is, hey, let's go ahead and, um, by the way, this variable, uh, I don't think we need it in this case, but it doesn't matter. But here, check this out. Tooltip. A GUI width and A GUI height. I actually think you're missing some things. Hold on. Because when you move the window, I think the size event gives you more options, not just to look to. Hold on. If we go here, uh, no. This is the V1 help? Uh, I, Let me see. Hold on. I don't think... Yeah, this is yeah, the V1 this help. Is, this Sorry. Is, this is... Right, so let's just open up the V2 help. This is part of why Rizwan, I was just saying, let's use, use our resizable GUI because we've right. got the framework for so much of it. Right, but here in particular, now the resized GUI um, was written in V1, if I remember right. No, so what we, I'm... we have it in V2. Oh, okay, we do. Okay, yeah, so you see, problem. okay, so you're right. It's only those two things, but notice that you only have the width and height, but you don't have the X and Y. You don't know if the window was moved or not. And I can confirm by saying this, check this out. I'll tooltip the width and height, right? I will run the, I will run the tool and look at this. You see the X and Y right here. So the width and height right here. When I move, resize it, it goes ahead and gives me the new size. But if I move the window, you see that this didn't change? No, it did not change because the size- It didn't change, right? So, but, and that's the problem. You cannot use the size event for what we really need to, because if I move this window, as soon as I move it, I want you to save the position into a file. But this doesn't get triggered by moving. It just yeah. gets triggered if you change the size. So yeah, at that I, point, right. I, you would have to use something else, which is, um, um, sorry, Windows messages, messages. Here, we can search if the WM move happened. So just for you guys to understand the whole concept is here, you see this on event size? Yeah. What you're really doing is capturing the WM size message. That's what that is doing. Auto hotkey just puts a pretty name to it because it's easier to understand. But what you want to capture as well, you want to capture both, is the WM move. Now, I don't know, and we can check on that, if the on event has one for when you're moving the window. So you can go here and you can see for the for the events, you have the close, drop files, escape, and size, but you don't want you don't have one for moving. 
you cannot capture when the window was moved this way. So what you would do is, and I would personally do it this way, I would remove this one and I would capture both of on event, on event, on oh, message, sorry, on message. That's the one that I want to do. I capture the message, which is the message that I want to capture. Well, let's go backwards. We want to capture the move, right? So I want to capture that message. And when I capture it, I want to call this function, right? And I also want to capture the uh, on event uh, size. So that means you change the size of the window. And I would like to call the same function. Now, we have to modify the function. And that's the reason why I'm doing both in the same way, instead of using one with the on site on event and one with the on message, because the callback for the on event is different than the calls the callback from the on message. At that point, I want them both to call the same function. So this is not what you get in uh, when you use the on message. What you get is something a little bit different. So if you go to the on message, you will see that the callback for that takes these four parameters. So in the end, if you use the on event and the on message, you cannot have the same function because they call differently and you don't want to be tracking whether one called the other. I would just both make them both the same type. And now I don't have to worry about it because they have different, they have different types. This is an object if you call the on size. This is never an object. So what I would do is just do this. And at this point, both call the same function. And I will just capture the, the GUI's width and height and do whatever I want with that. Now, how do you capture the width and height? Well, just grab the position of the window, say the wing get pause or it will get position or something like that and then capture whatever you want from that. And then once you capture it, save it to a file. But I'll leave that to you. The only idea that I wanted to really capture here is the on event is great for very simple stuff. Closing, escaping, that's it. As soon as you have to do a little bit more complex stuff, I would move away from these events and instead use the on message to capture the message and then work with it myself which is a little bit, it's more flexible because you, you can do other stuff with it, which with the on event, you might be limited to what you want to do. So in this case, just go with this and uh, I'm going to comment this out and you go ahead and um, uh, figure the rest on your own that you get the position, you save it into a file. And again, remember from the GUI, I want to get the X and Y but from the text, you see this text? Yeah. You should have a variable for it. This is the banner text, for example. Now, for the banner text, you want to get the width and height. So I would copy this guy. And then for this guy. So you have to do two things. From one, you want the x and y. So put it here x and y and for the other one you want the width and height and that's what you're going to say right in different locations of your so you figure how you're going to do that and um be careful with a few gotchas with the get position the get position command that has a few gotchas with the dpi settings and stuff like that so be careful with that um, just try to learn a little bit more about how that works and what other alternatives you have for getting the position of a GUI or an element that might take into account the DPI settings because you will run into problems if you change your DPI and save it incorrectly here, all right? 
All right, everyone, thanks for uh, watching that video. If you want to learn more about GUIs, we have a great Intro to GUIs course. Uh, it's both in V1 and V2, depending on which one you want to work with. V2, this is V2, much easier to work with GUIs than V1, but we do have both available. Cheers.